The need for speed. A lot of us have it, but we want to make something clear. It needs to be left in the video games and the Hollywood movies, because what this need for speed ignores is the safety of our most vulnerable road users. For too long, our streetscapes have been designed in a way that favors the car, resulting in environments that are unsafe for other road users. Traffic collisions are a growing and leading cause of serious injuries and death. Envision Zero Canada defines a traffic collision as a national health problem. In 2019, there was 175 pedestrian collisions, resulting in four fatalities right here in Halifax. Something needs to change. There have been efforts to try and improve safety for pedestrians and decrease the number of vehicle collisions. However, these measures haven't proven to be terribly effective. This is where Vision Zero comes in. Vision Zero is an initiative that was first established in Sweden in 1997 with the aim of reducing the number of deaths related to vehicle collisions to zero. There are a number of ways that Vision Zero differs from traditional ways of thinking of road safety. However, the main characteristic of Vision Zero is that the responsibility of safeguarding vulnerable road users lies within the designs of our roads and not with those who use them. Because let's face it, nobody's perfect. Human error is inevitable. But the idea behind Vision Zero is that traffic fatalities and injuries aren't. Traditional ways of looking at traffic safety rely heavily on spot fixing, which means making safety improvements to accident-heavy areas. But the problem is that collisions are often unpredictable, which is why there needs to be an overall systematic approach. We want to reiterate how important driving at slower speeds is for safety. A pedestrian hit by a vehicle traveling at 50 km an hour is five times more likely to suffer a fatality than if hit by a vehicle traveling at 30 km an hour. And it's estimated that for every 1.6 km an hour decrease in speed, the frequency of collisions is reduced by 5%. However, while it's important to not drive like a Hollywood stunt actor, sometimes a sign with a reduced speed limit simply isn't going to change behavior, even if enforcement measures are in place. That begs the question, what physical design measures get the stamp of approval from a Vision Zero safety expert? Vertical speed control elements are one example. These include speed bumps. Speed cushions, which are speed bumps, but with wheel cutouts to allow for vehicles such as fire trucks or ambulances to travel with ease and are effective on main thoroughways. Speed tables or raised crosswalks are also very effective. Of the collisions that took place over the past year, 62% of those happened at signalized crosswalks. That is far too high of a percentage for an area that's designed to make pedestrians feel safe, not put them in more danger. Measures that interrupt the linearity of roads, such as bump outs or chicanes, are effective in reducing driver speeds. The placement of these design features are effective both mid-block and at crosswalks. However, when bump outs are implemented at crosswalks, there's an added level of safety as it gives pedestrians a shorter distance of crossing and places them clearly in the sight of the driver. Making roads narrower by simply reducing the width of the road, implementing protective bike lanes, or adding medians all increase safety. Every city in the world should consider implementing a Vision Zero plan, and many have already done so. While there isn't a standard recipe that guarantees its success, it seems that many cities have mastered the ingredients more so than others. In Sweden, where Vision Zero originated, the number of deaths from traffic collisions have halved since the year 2000. And in Oslo, not a single pedestrian was killed by a vehicle accident this past year, proving that the Zero in Vision Zero really is possible. Comparatively, in Toronto, the number of vehicle-caused injuries actually rose in 2018 after seeing a local plan implemented in 2016. Without a strong regional implementation of Vision Zero measures, people who live outside of the city or commuted in ignored or found it challenging to understand the infrastructure changes. Why is it that the results have varied so much when the basics of Vision Zero plans are generally the same? While many places in North America have implemented Vision Zero plans, they are most often done so municipally. Cities that have had a lower success rate have been criticized for the measures they've implemented as being cheap and quick, and on the lower end of effectiveness. In Sweden, Vision Zero is a national policy, intended to bring about system change by shifting the culture of traffic engineering and planning across the whole country. They credit their high level of success to their bold approach and by focusing on supporting cyclists and pedestrians rather than cars. 
To be successful, Vision Zero strategies need to be implemented to their fullest potential and across a region, requiring municipalities and regional governments to collaborate. While the physical design features of our roadways are important, so is community engagement and a paradigm shift around Vision Zero ideologies. In many North American cities, there's been a reluctance to dramatically shift the way our roads are configured in order to make them more active transportation oriented. This is because the reliance on cars has been the cultural norm for decades. Each country and even city has a unique culture and infrastructure system. System designers must take this into account and look at the surrounding environments before putting in place a Vision Zero plan. In order to reduce our transportation-based carbon emissions, there needs to be a switch to active transportation. But unless vulnerable road users can be made to feel as safe as possible, there'll still be a reluctance to make the switch away from cars. It's time for Halifax to drive towards a future where all road users are safe, comfortable, and protected.